Cult Classics is a show where we explore some of the most revered boats and yacht builders in the world who have earned an almost cult-like status. In this episode, we explore one of the oldest boat builders in the United States, Huckins Yachts. Since Huckins was first launched in 1928, the company has been crafting distinctly unique boats with high-performance hulls for those who appreciate custom craftsmanship and timeless elegance. From building one of the first true planing hulls and designing an outboard rudder system for World War II PT boats, to constructing some of the most advanced modern fiberglass vessels in the U.S., this yacht builder has become a true American icon. The contribution that Huckins Yacht Corporation and Frank Huckins made to the winning of the war. The Navy Department had come to the conclusion that uh, motor torpedo boats could not be successfully built. But Mr. Huckins, for many years, had been developing and had perfected a planing type of seagoing hull which he was confident would meet all Navy requirements. But the Navy said, well, Mr. Huckins, if you want to risk your own money, and when you have her finished, why, we'll give her a tryout. Then if we like, why, we'll buy her. So Mr. Huckins and his company risked their financial future. And when the boat was completed, the Navy did have its trials up in Long Island Sound. And the outcome of it was that the Navy did accept the Huckins boat. So it can be said without any exaggeration whatsoever, the Huckins boat and the Huckins Yacht Corporation saved the entire PT boat program. Hello and welcome to Cult Classics. I'm Marilyn Demartini, and I'm here with Cindy Purcell, who's gonna share with us at Yacht World what it's like to grow up in one of America's oldest shipbuilding families. This company started from your grandfather, right? Right. Frank Pembroke Huckins. What a beautiful classic name to begin with. So what was it like for you as a kid? I remember my, my grandfather just Barely, I think I was five when he when he died. But I was um, always around, even as a baby, in the in the company. But being that part of the history of the company that you started as a recreational kind of a sport fish company, right? And then World War II comes, and as part of the war effort, you became a PT boat builder. Yes, we were um, actually my grandfather when he started the company in 1928. Uh, he is credited with um, designing the first planing hull. And his boats were double diagonally planked when most boats were Carvel planked. And so they didn't take on water and didn't need to be swelled up, so to speak, uh, when, they were, when they were taken out of the water and then put back in the water. They were very light and very fast and that they became really famous in the very beginning. It's because they were fast playing homes. So having an elite American customer buying your boats created the aura of Huckins. It did. B.F. Goodrich built the first boat. Uh, DuPont, Payne of Payne Weber. My grandfather was an absolutely wonderful designer, but also a great marketing person. And he would build a boat in the Jacksonville yard. And at that time he had a, a a sales office in, in Essex, Connecticut. So he would take his new Huckins up to Essex and he never came back with it, always sold it. The premise of the company, the real spirit of the company, what is that to the Huckins customer? Uh, I think it's the performance of the yachts. Uh, they are very light, very fast. And it, in the early days, all, all of our boats were coal molded, what you call coal molded today, which they were double diagonally plank mahogany. And my grandfather never varnished a hull. He said the boats were built to go out and be used and not to sit there and have all this varnish work. So of course, 
the superstructure was bright and the tow rails, etc. But it was made to go out and operate it and have fun and, and use it. Most of the boats that my grandfather built were between 34 and, um, and 50 feet. And then uh, we've grown all the way to 86 feet. And, but mainly our sweet spot is the, the 30s through the 50s. And this boat was built to, to replicate and really memorialize the 36 Huckins that was built in 1936, yes. correct? So it has very much the same lines, but all the traditions being updated with technology. That's right. And the idea was that the 36 was a very good looking boat. So we took the profile of that boat and we had to, of course, create 66 headroom. So some of that's changed, but if you put the 1936 boat and this boat next to each other, you can certainly see the DNA of, of this boat. We've seen that even in the picture that you have on board of it. And so many of the details, the structural details, like the rails here and the sloping lines and the woodwork yes. are all very reminiscent of yes, that 30s era. The, the stanchion is original, except originally it was aluminum and we uh, turned it into stainless steel for support. Our cleats are the original Huckins cleats, which no one else has. And then just some of the spirit of the interior being open in the, the dishes and the glass, glass cabinets, uh, they're all open. So I've always been intrigued by your logo, by the mermaid and by the fair form flyer. Tell us where that came from. My grandfather built fast boats, so they were fair of form and they were a flyer because they were fast. And the mermaid is fair of form and a flyer. So my grand grandfather made the mermaid logo in 1928 and it was so risque that the magazines didn't want to print it. So he came up with the, the bow of the boat in a bow wave. And then we brought it back in the 70s. And of course, the magazine certainly thought it was beautiful at that time. And uh, I, I think it's a, just a very unusual logo and good looking. Well, Mr. Huckins realized all during this war period that he had to prepare for post-war operations. He felt a very deep sense of loyalty to his fine crew of workmen. He wanted to keep them at work. He wanted to provide post-war employment for them. He had always dreamed of a fine modern plant built in the waters of the Ortega River, Jacksonville, Florida. And from there, these boats will pass to the harbors and rivers and yacht clubs of the entire world, not only of our Atlantic seaboard and the Gulf and the Great Lakes and the Pacific, but Hawaii, New Zealand, Australia, everywhere where yachtsmen appreciate the finest in boat performance. How did your father evolve into the business? Uh, after the war, uh, my father was in California and came back and um, my grandfather had two sons, my father and another son. And um, they both had worked in the boat yard as teenagers. Pembroke didn't want to come back into the business. My father did, and so he took over that side of the business. And as a woman coming into this business in, at a time where it wasn't very common, so you were a pioneer in that. What was it like for you? Well, um, I had wonderful parents. They never told me that just because I was female, I couldn't do anything. And I grew up running boats, being around boats. My father always took me out and taught me how to run whatever new boat we had. And so I never knew I wasn't supposed to do this. I, I was just very fortunate growing up in the business and um, having fun in the business. So like your grandfather, do you feel like you're a good salesperson? I mean, tell me about your, your clients. What are some stories about people who not just love the brand, but are loyal to it? Well, um, 
I only consider myself a salesperson because I truly believe in the product and the product sells itself. We say that our Huckins owners are a cult because when they get together, the only thing that they can talk about is their boats and there's nothing ever bad said about them. They're, they brag about how great they are. And our boats are unusual. They're not like every other yacht out there because we really zero in on performance. Uh, we're, we've been in custom boat builders for all this time, 93 years. And so on the custom building side, you have to give the customer what they want. The one thing that we never change is our hull design from the waterline down. We call that design, and my grandfather named that design, the quadraconic hull. And that's what won the PT uh, contract for my grandfather because he actually won a, uh, a contest against all other builders that was called uh, the Plywood Derby. And our boat outperformed all other PT boats at the time. So we've kept a variation of that hull through the years because it works so well. All of this production, uh, customized work that you've done over the years and now created more of a production boat, but with all of those creature comforts in it that you have learned over the years of what people want. That's right. It's. Um, been 40 years of, of my experience and our designers experience and we decided that we took all of those ideas and put it into uh, a compact boat that would you could have fun with. We're sitting here very comfortably ensconced in this lovely settee that just seems like it's built for the right human dimensions. You have a lot of other creature comforts like the wine cooler, the cabin that has the berths that come together electrically. What other kind of features were most important to your customers? Well, we think that a boat should be enjoyed and you should have an awful lot of fun. And so we have the wine cooler, the ice maker for entertaining. Uh, the greatest feature about this boat is that it's a hybrid and it is diesel power. It's 35 knots on diesel engines or it's electric power and seven miles an hour on electric motors, which is extremely quiet. And so it's nice just to go out and cocktail cruise. Uh, you're not smelling diesel fumes, you have no noise. And it just, uh, it's something that's different and we decide to design and put into our newest designs. Your helm, I think, is spectacular. It's almost like a framework of art and the steering wheel and all the things that you brought into it make it so aesthetic, but totally functional. This is all due to our craftsmen because they are such wonderful craftsmen. They want to add their own detailing. And one of them built the helm and uh, used the, the burl veneer because he said, this is what it needs to look like. So that was not our choice. This comes from our craftsmen, which we love. Well, you can feel in this boat, not only what it's supposed to look like, but what it's supposed to function like. And we could see out there on the water today that this boat cruises through any kind of water just as easily as cutting through butter. So you were at the helm. What did it feel like out there today? Oh, it's like a sports car. I love it. It can turn it and move it sideways and spin it around. And, and again, it's all about fun. And we put a, a ski rope behind there and my granddaughter tubed and my daughter water ski behind the boat. So that's the, it's the versatility. You've got fun. You've got classic design and you've got beautiful attention to detail and craftsmanship. And those are the things that create a cult classic. Thanks for joining us at Yacht World and thanks Cindy for bringing us aboard the Huckins Sportsman 38. To watch more, subscribe to our channel at youtube.com slash yachtworld and follow us on social media 
Stay tuned for the next episodes of Cult Classics, coming soon on YachtWorld.com.